Hello and welcome to the 24 Connect podcast. This is a show where we connect with leaders, innovators and pioneers in the world of video calling customers. Today, our head of customer success, Peter, is joined by the commercial manager of Partena, Koen van den Driessen. He will share the amazing story of how Belgium health insurer Partena introduced video calling as one of the first companies in Belgium. And he'll share some of the learnings they picked up along the way. Hey Koen, welcome on the show. You're a commercial manager at Partena. And I always wonder, how do people end up in the role they're currently working in? Um, is commercial manager the role you always dreamt of when you were a little kid? Um, that's that's a good question, uh, Peter. Well, I dreamed of being a police officer when I was young. So the ones that drive the motorcycles on the highway. Uh, nevertheless, luckily, my parents didn't allow me. So um, instead, I studied uh, commercial and marketing which uh, brought me to this uh, job, which is quite a dream job. So, Yeah, and it's also slightly safer than a motorized police officer. <laughs> Can you t- tell me a little bit more about your responsibilities as a commercial manager? Yeah, I'm um, responsible for all uh, uh, front office activities. And uh, one of them is also sales. So I'm uh, also responsible for the, the growth of the company, so the new clients, but also on the upsell or on our exist- existing population. Um, which is about 120 uh, people are involved in my activities. Okay, that's a, that's a really significant team. And can you tell me a little bit more about Partena as an organization? Yes, so um, we are a, a health insurance company, um, which means that we have hospitalization and dental insurances for customers, but also um, we repay funds like when you go to a doctor in Belgium, then our government has a system that um, health insurance companies can refund a part of the costs. And then uh, this whole organization is is um, yeah, let of, uh, is given to, um, I think, eight or nine health insurance companies in Belgium. Okay, so that's really a lot of different activities that Partena is involved on. Um, And in the intro, we mentioned that Partena is really investing in a number of digital channels for customer interaction. Why is that? Well, first of all, uh, we want to remain um, or keep our position as, as a digital leader in our industry. So that means that you really need to innovate very fast. Um And that's also part of our strategy. So we want to be the first digital leader in the, in the health insurance industry. And I think it's already three or four years that, that we have that position. But to keep it, you really need to go looking for new tools or new um, yeah, new, new innovations on the market. And, and video calling was one of the, the tools that wasn't used in the industry uh, last year. Okay, so it's really to keep that position as digital leader. And... What triggered Partena to invest in this particular channel? Well, uh, we are a fast-growing company um, and we still want to service our prospects and customers with the same workforce year on year. So that means that um, each year we are looking for efficiencies in our day-to-day work and um, we heard or we knew that video calling could help us in in, in, um, in getting more efficiency in our contact strategy. So that was one of the main reasons we we were looking for a supplier on uh, on video calling. Okay, so it was mainly efficiency driven then? Well, mainly efficiency. Secondly, um, well, our digital strategy, of course. And um, maybe the last one, um, if you look at, at Belgium, we, we, we have 40 uh, offices And in some parts of Belgium, we didn't have offices. So it's, it's very, it was very difficult to, to give a good service when you have clients 40, 50 minutes from, from a nearby office. So I, th- I thought in the beginning that also video calling could solve that, that problem. So if I understand this correctly, on the one side, you invest a lot in digital channels, among which video calling, but then you also have this strong physical f- uh, footprint in Belgium with uh, 40 offices. Um, how do you see these two channels working together, uh, the physical and the digital, or are they contradicting? How do you see that? No, 
No, no, no. That, that's a good question. Well, in in fact, um, um, we gave two years ago also the the remote tools um, to our to our offices. Uh, so it means that that people working in offices can can choose um, in their planning to go on remote or to go on the physical contacts with the clients. So um, client advisors in in our offices have both to work on. So they can have physical appointments, they can have now video call appointments, they can go on chat, they can go on WhatsApp. Um, so they have a lot of tools which are also remote. Okay, so they have a lot of different channels at their disposal. How do you, uh, yeah, how is the channel steering then done? Is it the advisor that chooses the channel or is it the customer that's in the leads? So, or is it an organizational choice like, for these type of meetings, we're going to use WhatsApp. For these types of conversations, we only allow customers to come to the office. For these type of meetings, we're only doing video chat. How is that channel uh, mixed tiered on? Well, it's it's both. So, or a client or a client advisor can choose the channel. Yeah? We have an, uh, an appointment uh, tool on our website, which is open for clients, but it's also the same tool that is used for for a client advisor to make an appointment with somebody. So um, we also have um, open door uh, planning um, uh, hours um, in, in our offices. So clients can also choose just go ad hoc to an office. Um, clients can call us, uh, we can call clients. So it's, it's both ways. Uh, each channel is open for client and open for client advisor to book or to, to choose the channel. All right, so that's, yeah. At, at, I love that. So both the customer and the advisor are able to pick and choose uh, their favorite channel based on the type of interaction. Um, yeah, indeed. Kun, if we zoom in on, on video, you implemented it last uh, year, at the end of last year. How, how was that? Um, was everybody immediately on board within your organization or did you have to do some lobbying with certain stakeholders? Um, well, our, our management was convinced um, we had some problems with the end users in the beginning so when we first uh, communicated about doing a proof of concept uh, on video call we had some end users already thinking that if video call would arrive then um, well they had to work after the normal or the official office hours until late in the evening um, a lot of people in, in the front office don't have technical skills, so they had a lot of questions. What if uh, technical problems arrive? Uh, we have people not knowing the difference between Google Chrome and Internet Explorer. So um, we had a lot of people that gave us the impression that it was once changed too much, maybe, um, in the beginning. All right, so there was some resistance, uh, I feel. How did you tackle that? The biggest win we had was one of the client advisors was a high potential in our organization. And uh, his name was also Peter, by the way. Um, and we, we asked Peter if um, he would um, like to be the project manager on the business side of the project um, because he was one of them. So he could he, he knew the influencers. He, know, he, knows the, the people, he knows the people that are not cooperating. Um, he knows what problems he had to tackle with them. He also knew the back end of uh, our appointment tool on our website. Uh, and he really understood why they sometimes had resistance. So it, it, it was not top down. It was like one of them doing the project for them. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the part I really love about the project uh, at Partena because it's something that we observe with many other customers that a project lead is not always as connected to the business um, and definitely not connected to the end user, who, yeah, the people actually using the technology and doing those conversations with customers. Well, well here you really chose to make an end user responsible for the entire project and even uh, offer some career possibilities on the back of that. Yeah. When implementing video calling, you really decided from day one to use it as an integrated channel um, versus standalone. And I wanted to check with you why did you make the decisions and which integrations did you choose to implement? Yeah. 
Okay, so um, well, as I mentioned before, we had we have our own built uh, appointment tool, which has some auto notifications when, when the client books uh, uh, an appointment. Um, so we really wanted to use the same tool to be in front of the video call. So we 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 have chosen in the beginning to not have a digital waiting room, but really work on appointments. Uh, so we went. We wanted a full integration with uh, our own tool. Secondly, we yeah we use Microsoft Dynamics 365 uh, our CRM. Um, so to have still remain to have the the 360 view on a client and a client behavior, um, it was it was really necessary to also have an integration with the with the CRM. And then secondly, we use Tableau as a BI tool. And we wanted um, the reporting of the proof of concept uh, to be in Tableau. Already that afterwards, when we go live, we don't have integrations anymore to do on the BI side. Uh, so those three tools were on the list to have a, a full integrated uh, solution. All right. Yeah, that's such such a contributor to success. And I think particularly um, the fact that you, from day one, um, implemented it in that appointment uh, booking tool that uh, that Partena has is, is really strong because that way you offer video as a channel alongside those other channels that you offer and it's a great yeah. way of measuring the appetite your customers have um, for video and yeah, I, I think that was a big success or a big contributor to, to your success because when we launched from day one uh, there were meetings flowing in and your yeah. advisors were it's really true. busy it's, doing uh, video calls it's a, if if we want to know the percentages, we had um, the first two months of the proof of concept. We had um, more than eighty percent of the bookings for video call done by the client itself. All right, yeah, that that is great, um, and I love how it's actually the end customer driving this, and it I think it also helps you build the case internally uh, that there is a demand for this channel. Yeah, yeah, and Kuhn, I think. This other thing that we discussed, right, um, from day one, you had really concrete business goals attached to video. So it was not something, hey, we're going to try this channel and see what it brings us. Uh, let's experiment. But it was really video calling was an answer to a concrete business challenge that you had. Can you maybe elaborate a little bit on those business goals? Um so we we, uh, we we wanted to bench a little bit the video call solution with the physical appointment uh, that we already have for, for four years. So first of all, we wanted a net promoter score, which was um, as good as our current uh, net promoter score for an appointment uh, on a physical contact on, on an office. Secondly, um, I wanted to reduce the steps in, a, in our sales funnel. Um, that's the efficiency gain that I wanted to have. And then um, uh, thirdly, there was this conversion ratio. So we have quite a good conversion ratio on leads when um, prospects or clients come to an office. And I wanted to have the same conversion ratio or better um, on a video call. Okay. And how are you, how are you tracking uh, versus those goals? Um, well, from the beginning, beginning, it was quite clear that the net promoter score was very, very high. Um, I think now the average is, is 78 um, on NPS is, is quite quite high, which is better than... than a, Whoa, it is really high. Yeah, it's, it's better than a physical appointment. Um, we have one step less uh, in our sales funnel, so we close the deal one step quicker, and the conversion ratio is just the same as a physical contact or a physical appointment in an office. It's, uh, also uh, quite high. Kun, as, as we mentioned, Partena started end of last year with uh, video calling customers, and then in March, COVID happens. How did those recent developments impact video? Um, well, uh, after the proof of concept, we decided to go live 
uh, for the sales because the proof of proof of concept was also, was also done um, by the salespeople. Um, and then COVID nineteen arrived, and then immediately we we opened our uh, booking module, our appointment tool, also for service topics. So uh, we had uh, to double our uh, client advisors in the, in video call to also be able to serve on on on, uh, on service topics, uh, which was in the beginning not not meant to be. Uh, not meant to be so fast, but due to this Corona um, period, we we yeah, we were obliged to do that. Um, and in less than a week, we we scaled up uh, from I think eleven or th- or twelve client advisors and sales to twenty five uh, extra people on uh, on service topics. Um, and then um, secondly, what also happened is that our bigger bigger sister, uh, who is called Partina Mut in the French speaking part of Belgium, um, they didn't have video call and. Um, they are normally very skeptical on new tools, and within two or three weeks, they really asked uh, how uh, we did it. And uh, then, then they also contacted Twenty Four Sessions, um, and even uh, the south part of Belgium is now on uh, on video call. Okay, so then it really accelerated the the broader adoption of of video within the Partena group. Yep. All right, Kun, and now let's let's look to the future. Um, what, what we see in, in the market at different customers, but also different other organizations using customer interaction video calling is that it went from for most a nice to have channel to an absolute must have and, and, and a crucial channel. H- how do you see that um, evolve for Partena in the future? Yeah, um, so now the 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 video call option is used by client advisors in our um, in our front office in the in the in the offices. Um, I think after summer we're gonna make uh, a full dedicated team uh, on service and on sales, uh, which will be mainly working on the video call. Um, so it's it, now it's I think 20 25 percent of their of their uh, day job and i think after summer we have a we will have a full full uh, team on, on on both service and and sales um because w- what we see now is when we open um 100 slots 24 hours later 89 percent is filled in so capacity wise i i need to scale up uh, even bigger and it means that the 25 people using it now um have we have to plan them more on on video call and then you have a make then you have to make a, a, a dedicated team um, okay so that that is actually really interesting because you're going from this advisor that has multiple different channels at their disposal face to face phone and video to to really create a dedicated team yeah. really with a focus on the video channel yeah that's that's true um and well, one of the another reason is that due, due to this uh, COVID nineteen, uh, people started starting to work from home, and um, I think people will still remain working from home. And then uh, you cannot have physical contact with clients, so video call uh, a video call team will be able to give people more the opportunity to work from home. Right now, Kun, you're quite far along on that. Uh, on the journey of implementing video calling, what was your key learning over over this period? It's, it's for me doing a proof of concept uh, with all integrations already done in the proof of concept, so not afterwards in, in a go live, is is also part of the success. Um, and if I do a project after after holiday, I have to also do an, another project on on video chat, and we. We also going to make sure that in the proof of concept, all necessary integrations are embedded uh, in the new tools. Um, so. Yeah, that is really fascinating, and it, something that we really see rarely is that customers from day one in a POC that they integrate um, video calling straight away. Usually, they say, "Hey, let's." go fast, let's learn, let's go stand alone. And then if it's successful, then we'll do the step to integration. But usually the first, the first part is, is just stand alone. Well, it's, it's, it's true, Peter, but it's easy to go for a standalone solution, but 
afterwards, if you go live and then you have to do all the integrations and you have to, we, we had situations where we had to double the mandates uh, on the projects just, just to do the integrations. Yeah, Kun, I, I totally um, get that logic and it's what I think we try to preach to our customers as well. But what are some of the arguments that you've used to convince stakeholders on your end to start with that integrated solution? Uh, particularly when in the beginning you have no tangible business results yet to rely on. Uh, uh, f first of all, um, it's very important that within Partena to have a 360 view on a client. And if you don't integrate uh, a tool like video call in your, in your CRM, you, you don't get that view anymore. Secondly, if you want to see how successful a proof of concept is, you, you need to measure it. You need to be able to bench it with, with, with other contact um, channels. Um, and then last but not least, everybody knows that a standalone tool afterwards in, in do an integration that then you have change requests and everything and that costs a lot of money also. Um, so for me, th those are the three reasons why a full integrated uh, proof of concept is for me uh, almost a must to do. I'm gonna, I might use those uh, arguments, uh, Kuhn, so uh, <laughs> hey. Um, another question: If you if you could travel back in time and you could start over again, um, which uh, what would you do different? What would I do differently? Um, good question. Um, in the beginning, when when we first started to communicate in the organization that we were going to do a proof proof of concept, um, instantly a rumor started that um, video call was perceived as a tool for working outside the, off the normal office hours. So immediately the, the resistance started. Um, so if I would do the, the project again, I would um, directly start with, with tackling um, resistance. And I would immediately also communicate that it's, the tool is not meant to, to work after the, the, the normal hours and then to work from, from five o'clock in the evening until nine o'clock in the evening. Um, because in the, in the banking industry in Belgium, they, they do that. And, and that's maybe why the rumor started also. Uh, so I would, I would tackle this one from the first beginning. Okay, so that's interesting because your colleagues assumed that video calling customers equaled working outside office hours. But what's interesting is that when I look at the numbers, they are actually using video calling outside office hours. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's strange to see that that uh, in their planning tool or in the booking tool, our client advisors, they open themselves blocks or slots in the evening um, because they, they, they now experience the flexibility the tool has, but also the flexibility of working, working from home. And without asking even, um, they are now opening slots even until nine o'clock, I see sometimes in the, in, the, in the planning tool. Yeah, that is great to hear, Kuhn. And I think also testament to a fantastic culture that you built within the team. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Peter. All right, on, on that note, Kuhn, I really want to thank you for joining our podcast today. Thanks for sharing all those insights um, and talk soon. Take care, Peter.